All students should know that this is an indigenous place. The University of Oregon has the ongoing responsibility to the indigenous peoples of the state. People have a tendency to think of Native Americans as one single group, but we're actually made up of many different specific groups. A lot of people probably arrive at their sense of place when they arrive here on campus. What gets erased from that entire narrative, however, is the profound indigenous presence that's all around us. Part of understanding where you are is understanding the language understanding the people who were there before and how through their language they understood their relationships and continue to understand their relationships to place. The novel The Roundhouse is built around a few themes. But it really is a book that magically brings together this coming of age story from this perspective of a young boy um, talking about something that happens to his mother and the wider family. Some of the issues in the book revolve around questions of justice more broadly. Questions of jurisdiction um, between the United States and the indigenous nations that were here um, when the United States arrived. Native issues, you know, are not silent anymore. This book provides a wider lens and opportunity for people to learn about those things. It's a story about teenage angst and also teenage love. There are summer camps, there are love stories. It's got a lot of pop cultural references into it. It's grounded in history, but from a really contemporary context. You cannot talk about American history without talking about the history of genocide, colonialism, and white supremacy. And the Roundhouse gets at those topics without kind of hitting you in the face, in a way. It tells you this perspective from a young boy and what happens to the broader community. Over 80% of Native women will experience some form of violence in her lifetime, and over 50% of Native women will experience some form of sexual violence. We gotta create an awareness and understanding that, that Native people are here and we're, you know, and this, this system is still working against us and, you know, it's, it's hurting our communities, and especially our women, at a high rate. Unilateral legislation and Supreme Court cases have limited the capacity of tribes to take action when crime occurs. As a Native woman, you are more likely than not to be a victim. If a sexual predator sees that a group of women is unprotected by the law, they're gonna hone in on that group of women. And so Native women have this structural vulnerability built in. And that's one of the reasons we have the, the sexual violence rate against Native women that's uh, two and a half times the national average. When I first went to college, uh, I wanted to be a lawyer for the Native American Rights Fund. Native American rights was definitely my passion. And in reading the book, it was easy to see that we aren't gonna win fights if, if the mainstream culture doesn't know these narratives. And I think we got to treat it as an everyone problem, not just a, a woman problem. You know, it's, this affects a lot of people, not just women. So when you're reading The Roundhouse, some of the things that you should think about is, what does justice look like for a community of people who have never been treated justly by the U.S. government? Why do you think Erdrich chose to narrate the story, not through the victim and survivor of sexual assault, but through her son, an adolescent boy? There is no legal remedy when indigenous women are, are exposed to sexual violence. What do they do when there's no jurisdictional body that's there to take care of them? A lot of times we have students in the classroom who've said they've never learned anything about Native Americans ever. They don't know anything about contemporary indigenous people. And so they should ask themselves why that is. 